Hi there, my name is Dave and in this video I'm going to share with you my techniques and tips on how I achieved this pastel painting of Colonel Tom and his daughter Anna. So let's take a look. Right, so first of all, all I'm doing is laying in the primary colours, a red, blue and yellow, to get the shades of the face. So if it's red, you use the green for the shadow. If it's more of an orange colour, you use blue. Um, I'll go into that in more detail further on in the video. But basically what you're doing is filling in the tooth of the board, because it's like a sand board, and just laying the foundations, getting the form in certain ways, you know, like trying to get the sh shadow areas and the uh, details where things are. Not really spending loads of time, just feeling your way through and just really enjoying the process really of just mapping everything out. Because you know at the end, on top of this, that's where you're going to put the detail layers. So it's not really a matter of trying to get everything accurate, it's just a feel and uh, getting a, a feel for it. So just shaping the face, not be frightened to move things around. Getting that black area, you can see that I did the black, the, the dark blue uh, in so I could see the values better in the face. That's always a good idea to get sort of really dark colours in first. And then you can work out the mid-tones and so on. And again with the hair, you don't have to do it exact as what the reference is, it's just a feel. Uh, because it will drive you nuts if you try to uh, do every hair the same as what the reference is. It's just a matter of, uh, of the feel of it. Because if you're drawing that from life, the, the, the model will only have to move or brush your hair back and it's completely different so you know it's you don't have to really get bogged down with details basically what you do is you find the colour similar to what it is so I'm using a burnt umber there but then you go over with the primaries again so you try and get the colour shades correct in the hair because in the hair there's greens, the blues, the purples, there's all sorts of colours so basically it's just getting the darks in with the browns and maybe the black as well so really shad shadow areas and then going over that with the red, blue and yellow really to get all the tones so basically you're just using three primaries and secondary colours in everything you draw really that's what I do anyway Right, so here we are, here's the colours, the uh, red, blue and yellow, which is the primary. Uh, the yellow there is the yellow ochre, which is really good for skin tones. Um, for the secondary colours, which obviously is the green, orange and purple. So if you wanted a shadow of blue, you would need orange. If you wanted a shadow of yellow, you would need purple. If you wanted a shadow of red, you'd need green. So using them combinations really makes the skin tone fresh and alive. Rather than using black as a as a form of making a shadow, use the complementary ones. Just refer to the colour wheel. You can see loads of stuff on YouTube that explains how the colour wheel works, so just refer to that. Right, the first pencil I'm showing here is the Caron de Arch pencil, which is Swiss made, very vivid, excellent quality. Uh, and then for the first uh, initial coats, I tend to use the Carbothello and, and Conti e Paris pencils. Quite soft and chalky, which is really good for sort of laying the foundation. Uh, but then eventually I use the whole, the whole three. Uh, as I'm doing the details, but initially those first chalky ones. Uh, 
again just relaxing enjoying the process um, don't get too wrapped up with details the thing is with details the eye actually fills the gaps so if you're looking at something from a distance the eyes will fill the gaps up and you'll think it's more detailed than what it actually is so really you only need to put a suggestion of details I mean, when I was younger, I put every little fine hair in and every piece was actually had to be spot on before I moved on to another area. Uh, but that's one way of doing it. You know, you can achieve great work with that. But as I've got older I've, I've, um, and when I'm trying to feel it more, I tend to try and draw the whole thing first and then put the details so I'm working on all the face at the time, you know, I'm just working on one area and then moving on. But you do whatever suits you. I mean, I can only suggest and show you what works for me, but it might not work for you. You might want to just work with the eye and then completely do the eye first, then go on to the nose and then to the mouth. I mean, that's how I used to do it when I was younger. Uh, but this is how I do it now so I can only show you what I do now so whether you adopt this method or not is entirely up to you. See it's constantly moving things around not frightened to move um, shapes Things always change as you put colour in. And again, it's opening your heart as well. That's a key thing for me, is to let go of the mind, keep out of the way. I've said this in many of my videos. And just connect to your heart and let it flow from there, rather than thinking what to do, because that will just cripple you, really maybe become fearful and frightened to do things but when you open your heart you, you just it flows you don't even think about it and you know challenges is no longer challenges really so what I tend to do with this as well is I, I put the white on then I Put a light coat of colour on top of the white that's how I get subtleties so sometimes I mean when you've got a, a group of pencils the, you can't get the exact colour you want so you have to mix as you go along so that's what I'm doing all the time is mixing the colours as I'm going uh, rather than trying to find you know like 100 or 200 different types of shades of pencils it would drive me insane I just couldn't do it that I like to mix things along it makes things really subtle they always look wrong when you first draw hands but when you start putting the light and shade and colors in there it's surprising how it just starts to shape up and and, and start to see, seem to feel like hands. And Even the clothes, um, what, I, what I do with the pastels, I find a colour which is very similar and then uh, again I use red, blue or yellow on top of that and mix with it to get the correct shade and purples obviously because if you've got yellow there you'd be using purples for the shadow orange you're using blues see I'm using ready brown pencil um, which is like a burnt sienna but you still see that as re as a reddish colour so then you'd use green for the shadow of that I love doing glass it makes a real change to do glass very fascinating to do uh, 
I do it very lightly to start with, um, just to get the shape right and get everything in the right position before I, I put lay on heavy colour. And it never comes together straight away. You think, go on, what have I done? You know, you think, oh no, this is looking not right. But you just gotta keep persevering. And if you just relax and just enjoy the process, it will come together in the end. It will just shape up on its own without any interference of yourself. Uh, the more you try and think and try and work something out, the less you'll be able to do it. It's difficult to explain. But the more you open your heart, the more it'll just flow and... And to get that really shimmery look, uh, lemon yellow is really good to use. A very cold yellow. And see, I always, I mean, sometimes you, you know, you'd be doing the glass, then all of a sudden you go onto the hands. Just let your mind relax and just go where you want to go. Uh, and keep changing, you know, just keep working on different areas. Same as a face, you just lay in colour down first, uh, just to fill that tooth of the board, um, get rid of the grain, and then building it up there. I used green for the shadow to start with, but then that wasn't dense enough, so then I used black. But then put red on top of the black to make it a red black, if you know what I mean. If you are getting value from this video, why not subscribe? It's absolutely free, and you're sure not to miss any future videos. Again, again, hands are really fascinating to draw. You've really got to be patient and let go of um, the thought uh, because you look at it and you think, oh my God, it's not coming together. But the hands look so wrong when you first start them. It's when you start putting the, the correct values on there, which gives it form. So when the tones are correct and the colors are correct, it just comes together. So don't worry too much at the start with. Uh, just relax and know that it will get better. That's the thing, key thing is perseverance. Always persevere. Again, using the three primary colours and the secondary colours to achieve the correct values and shade. I'm just blending it. I use my finger a lot to blend stuff as well. But I use a special blender. But I'll, le I'll leave all the um, a list of materials in the description below. So you can have a look at that when you've seen the 
the, f the video. It's amazing how many different colours are in glass. But you can mix any colour there is with those three primaries. So that's all you need to use. If you can if you can get a colour which matches more or less, use that first, but then add the you know to finish off just get the subtleties of it by using the, the primaries and the secondaries on top. Um, I mean, but if you sometimes you can't find a pencil close to what colour it is, so you just have to mix it there and then on the board. Also, the, uh, on the reference image, the actual uh, level of the drink in the glass was sloping. It always has to be level because water always finds a level. So you always have to make sure that's perfectly horizontal um, when you actually draw it on your painting. It's a good thing to remember. What I tended to do with this is well look into a mirror because the glass, the, you know, drawing a glass is sometimes very <laughs> difficult, uh, and your stem of it was slightly off. So what I did, I looked into a mirror at the painting, and I saw straight away what needed to be corrected. So really, uh, using a mirror for portraiture or anything really is such a good idea because uh, when you see a flip image, uh, or you know, a flip of your image. It brings out all sorts of imperfections that you've done. So, yeah. So we're again with the medals. I'm just drawing it out very roughly. Uh, not really worried about detail. It's just getting everything in the right place. Getting the foundation laid. Now to make gold. It, I found that if you use like a burnt sienna with lemon yellow, it's a really lovely colour combination that it makes it look goldy. So that's good, good to get a gold if you haven't got a gold in your selection of pastels. And on the reference image, there's no detail at all in the medals, so I actually referred to a photograph uh, from the internet just to see the detail so then I put suggestions of detail in the painting which wasn't in the reference but uh, it's always good to get backup details if you can from other sources
But the reason for the cap I'm wearing is because it takes away the light from the left eye because I've got light coming from the left side and um, it makes one pupil smaller than the other which causes problems so what I do is okay, I'll just put that to cover the light I think it's a modern, I see it as a modern day berry really <laughs> it's just a cap on its side it helps you to see colours correctly as well I mean, to get the, the colour of the navy, uh, I used a purple to start with, then laid on the black, and then used a different blue with uh, like a crimson red, which gave the correct purple shimmer to it. So it's just a case of experimenting, trying different blues until you get the correct shade, and then stick with that really. Yeah, just putting some final details in towards the end there. 